Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about the induced electric field in a semiconductor with a non-uniform distribution of carriers. In this picture, you can see that we have a distribution of carriers where the distribution is higher in the left and slowly goes lower to the right. The goals of this video are to discover how a non-uniform distribution, such as in this picture, produces an electric field, and to go over a few example problems. We will use these example problems to help us to understand the consequences of this effect. As stated, over here on the left, we have a block of semiconductor, which has a graded distribution of carriers, higher concentration on the left to lower concentration on the right. It turns out that this produces an energy band diagram that has a slope, as shown in the picture below. In this picture, we have chosen to plot the Fermi level as a flat line. What that means is that we have a slope for the conduction and valence bands, as well as the intrinsic Fermi level. You might recall that when we have a donor doping concentration that is higher, that means that the Fermi level will move closer to the conduction band. And when we have a doping level that is lower, that Fermi level will move farther away from the conduction band. And as you can see in the picture below, that's exactly what we're picturing. On the left, we're showing that the Fermi level is very close to the conduction band, but on the right, it is much further away, as indicated by the lower doping concentration. Therefore, I think it is easy to see how this picture is representative of the semiconductor's band diagram when we have a graded distribution. What's really cool is that we can represent this tilted band diagram, and we can show how there is an electric field in this direction. The question we'll be answering is, what is that equation that represents the electric field? Now let's take a closer look at the derivation of the electric field. Before we start with the math, let's define a few assumptions that we're making. The first assumption that we're making is that we're going to be in thermal equilibrium. The next assumption that we're going to make is that the doping concentration in sub D is sufficiently larger than the value of the intrinsic carrier concentration. Later, this assumption will lead to a quasi-neutrality condition, in which case we assume that the number of carriers in the conduction band is the same as the donor doping concentration. As a reminder, the units for the energy levels in a band diagram are given in electron volts. Therefore, one of the things that we can say is that the distance between the Fermi level and the intrinsic level, if we divide by a value of charge, E, is, is a potential difference that we'll call phi. Therefore, we can define this potential difference, phi, as being equal to 1 over the charge, E, times the difference in the energy levels. In this case, let's look at the difference between the Fermi energy and the intrinsic Fermi energy. We may recall that the electric field is given as minus the derivative of the electric potential. Substituting, we can find that this is minus d dx of 1 over E times EF minus EFI. Taking a close look at this and referring back to our diagram over here, we can see that for the length x of this device, that we are showing EF as being a constant value, whereas EFI is the value that is changing with respect to the distance. Therefore, over in this equation, we can start to perform this derivative, and we'll find that this is equal to plus 1 over E times ddx of EFI of x. Since we're looking at differences in the Fermi levels, we may recall our Fermi equations. This Fermi equation relates the carrier concentration in sub naught to the difference in these potentials. Looking at our quasi-neutrality condition we defined earlier, we can then substitute ND into this. But we know that because this is a graded distribution, that ND is a function of the distance, x. In the above equation, we need a function of E of I of x. Therefore, if we rearrange this equation down here, we can come up with a function for E of I of x. Now, this is a simple matter of substitution and taking some of the derivative. Taking a look at this derivative that we have to perform, we can see that EF is a constant value and therefore will not be a function of the derivative. And we can take a look at the natural log. Natural logs, like exponential functions, are nice and simple when it comes to taking derivatives. All we have to do is take a look at the value that is a function of x, and we're going to find that it will come out and be 1 over that value. Therefore, we can partially solve this derivative by simplifying and using the chain rule. 
and we find the value to be minus kt over e times one over nd of x times the derivative of nd of x. And this is our final equation for the electric field. For both of our example problems, our objective is to find the induced electric field in a semiconductor in thermal equilibrium. For this first example, we're given that the temperature of the semiconductor is 300 degrees Kelvin, that the doping concentration profile is a linear profile given as 10 to the 17 minus 10 to the 19 times the distance x in per cubic centimeters. For this problem, we're asked to solve the value of the electric field at x equals zero micrometers. Down here at the bottom, I have reminded ourselves the equation for the electric field. The first step that we should perform is taking the derivative of this nd of x equation. This is a rather simple derivative since it's a linear equation and we can see that the derivative will be minus 10 to the 19. At t equals 300 degrees, we know that kt over e equals 0.0259 volts and we can simply plug in this equation for nd of x. Therefore, we can get the equation of e of x as being equal to minus 0.0259 volts times 1 over the nd of x equation times minus 10 to the 19. We can now simplify this equation by recognizing that the two negatives will cancel, and we can put both of these values on the top. Solving this equation at x equals 0 eliminates this portion of the denominator, and that gives us 10 to the 19 divided by 10 to the 17, which is just simply 10 to the 2. Therefore, at x equals 0, the value of the electric field E of x will be 2.59 volts per centimeter. One important thing to note about this particular equation is that the electric field varies over the distance of the device. This is in contrast to what we're going to find when we have an exponential equation for the carrier concentration across the length of the device. In that case, we're going to find that the electric field is constant. In our next example problem, we are again going to find the induced electric field in this semiconductor while it's in thermal equilibrium. We'll consider the temperature to be 300 degrees Kelvin, and the concentration profile is given as an exponential equation. Again, the first step in solving this problem is to find the derivative of the concentration profile in d of x. Since this is an exponential function, we know that the derivative of an exponential is the constant out in front of x. In this case, that'll be minus one over L times the exponential itself. Substituting for L equals 10 to the minus two, we can simplify this equation. Now that we have the derivative, we can move on to plugging the value of the equation into the full electric field equation. Now that we have the derivative, we can plug this value into the full equation for the electric field. And we'll find that the electric field is equal to the thermal voltage, 0.0259 volts, times this value of minus 10 to the 19 e to the power of minus x over L in per centimeters to the fourth, divided by our original equation for nd of x, 10 to the 17 e to the minus x over L in per cubic centimeters. Looking at this equation, we can see that these two negatives will cancel, and the units will be in volts per centimeter. We can also easily see that e to the minus x over l is in both the numerator and denominator and will cancel each other out. And 10 to the 19 over 10 to the 17 is simply 10 to the 2. Therefore, our result is going to be a constant electric field with a value of 2.59 volts per centimeter. It is important to note that when we have a distribution of carriers that is an exponential profile, we're going to get a resulting constant electric field across that device. And with that, this concludes this video of Unwired Learning.